or it could be a composite number of columns. You can create primary index on a single column or a combination of the columns. So it is called as a composite primary index if you have more than one column in the primary index where you can separate it with commas. And you have a unique primary index where you won't allow duplicate values in this column. And you have a non-unique primary index where you allow duplicate values also in the primary index column. And from Teradata 13 onwards we have seen there is no primary index keyword with which you can create a table with no primary index and it, internally Teradata will take care of the data distribution. We will discuss about no primary index table in the utilities part when we explain you the fast load utility. There is a relation with that. So these are basically two kinds of primary index we have seen. Unique primary index and non-unique primary index. It could be composite or it could be simple, the single column. And then once you create the primary index at the time of table creation, you cannot change it any time. Right? You cannot change the primary index of the table which you have declared in the structure at the time of table creation. If you want to change the primary index, you have to take a backup of this. If there is a data in the table, you have to drop this table, you have to recreate it with the new primary index and then they get the data back from the backup to the actual table. It is the only workaround what you can do if you want to change primary index of an existing table. Okay, by existing table. Okay, if, if the table is already existing and if data is already populated in the table, you cannot change it. The primary index can be decided at the time of table creation only. Right? And we have seen what happens if I create a table with unique primary index and I insert some data in it. Okay, how hash algorithm would help us to generate hash values and with the help of hash values how it would determine a AMP number in which the actual data record has to be stored. Right? Once the data is stored, we will retrieve it with the select queries and while retrieving the data, if you use the primary index in the equality condition of the WHERE clause, again the hashing algorithm which is a subcomponent of parsing engine would generate the same hash value which it was generated at the time of insertion and it will go to that particular AMP and can pick up the data directly. So it would happen with a one AMP operation. Right? In case if we don't provide the primary index with the equality condition then it could be multi AMP or all AMP operations. Right? Similarly if it is a non-unique primary index the difference is there could be multiple records with the same primary index value because it is non-unique. So if you have multiple records with the same primary index, they all would go into same AMP because the hash algorithm generate the same hash value for all those records of same primary index value. Right? What are the two major characteristics of the hash algorithm? It generates same hash value for same index values always and it generates different hash value for different index values always. Right? Because of that characteristic, during retrieval also if you use the primary index in the where class, it will generate the same hash value which was generated at the time of insertion and then by seeing this hash value, parsing engine or optimizer will know in which AMP the records are being stored and it can pick up the data with a single AMP operation. The only difference is in case of a unique primary index you will get always a one record as a result with a one amp operation. But here in the non-unique primary index case you may get multiple rows also but it is a one amp operation in both these scenarios. Right? So both UPA and NUPA access are one amp operations. Right? Any questions anyone so far? Data distribution, architecture, whatever so far we have covered. Okay, here I see one question in the chat window. 
the number of amps and virtual disks increase as load increase no where is all the statement whenever load increase you can purchase teradata system and you can combine it with the existing machine so that the number of amps and virtual disks would increase and based on the upgradation what you did internal hash maps everything is also upgraded so yes then the parsing engine will know how many amps are there and how many hash values it can generate randomly and how it can distribute okay these things will be, it will it will be covered in the hash index mechanisms the internals of hash mechanism will it will cover next class section okay so your question i understand if number of amps and vdis increase then how hash algorithm can know the new amps and new vdis added in the system and it can distribute the data across all the available virtual disk at that moment yes it would happen whenever you add the machine you upgrade all the hash maps hash algorithm everything so that it will know that new number of amps are added in the system clear good any other questions okay so now let us see some example of a table and we'll see how we have to choose a primary index and if you choose primary index of one column how the data distributes and how it would impact okay the choice of primary index impact the data distribution and the performance of the table some examples so case 1 i have an order table with four columns order number customer number order date and order status these are four columns in my table and order number is a logical primary key when i say primary key it identifies each and every row uniquely so it is almost unique right and i have chosen this order number as my unique primary index for example you see the data this is almost unique right it is not repeated there is no duplication as per this column order number and these are the customer numbers who has given the orders and on what date they have ordered the product and the order status is it open order closed that means it was already served if it is already completed closed and if it is still open it is open okay, this is my data in the product order table order numbers their corresponding customer who ordered it on what date and what is the status of this order right and if this is the table and if you have to choose a primary index out of this which one we generally choose to do the data analysis and if identify this particular order number column is unique and then you may choose this order number as a unique primary index then what happens when you start inserting this data the hash algorithm would activate and will try to hash all these index values and generate corresponding hash values and based on the hash values it will determine in which amp the records has to be stored and round robin manner it will try to distribute the records across all the available four amps in this scenario see here two records in first amp three records in second amp two records into third amp two records again onto fourth amp so can i say it is evenly distributed almost two records and one record extra that went to amp number 2 so it is a 100% even distribution i can say because it is a unique primary index and the distribution has happened 100% i can say right or 99.9% okay when the data is distributed very much even then the amps would get a even workloads on them and then if you write any query which access all amps that means if you don't use a primary index in the where clause with the equality condition then what happens all amps has to fetch their portions of the data to serve your query like select sort from the orders table all amps would get that query and all amps would work on their portions of the data and can get you the results back and 
it would take very optimized time because all amps work parallelly on the equal portions of the table right for example i have identified customer number as my non unique primary index for example i can do that right no one restrict me to choose any primary index okay, i did my analysis and i found customer number is useful and if i choose customer number what happens see customer numbers are repeated here so i cannot create a unique primary index so it should be a non unique primary index so what happens if i create a non unique primary index on the customer number when 2 is hashed it would get a hash value and based on that hash value it is determined that the two records should be stored in amp number 1 3 is determined to be stored in amp number 4 for example yeah based on the hash value generated it will decide in which amp it has to go okay yeah, how it decide everything we'll see in the next internals of hashing algorithm but now we just understand based on the index value it will generate a hash value and based on the hash value it will determine in which amp the record has to be stored so it is a black box internally what happens we don't know now but maybe in next class they will get to know that so it is a black box algorithm for us for now okay it will take the index values generate the hash value based on the hash value it will determine in which amp the record has to be stored so all the, the three would go in amp number 4 and one would go in amp number 2 then again one so where it goes if again the customer number one comes the same hash value which was generated for the previous record would be generated again okay? and so in the same amp all the records of the same primary index value has to go in isn't it see all ones are there in a single amp all twos whenever a two value comes in primary index it would get the same hash value generated for the records which was already generated for the previous records and so all these records of primary index value 2 would go in the same am similarly all threes would go in same am so there are only three distinct values in our example and we have four different ams as we have only three distinct values only three ams are populated but one am don't get any data so so this is called as skewness of the data where one am won't get any data and other amps has to get more data and if this is the case the workload is not even across the amps so this particular amp has to work more it has to process four records maximum and it has to process zero records it is minimum if the difference is more then the workloads are not even so whatever time this amp takes to process the data that would be the time we have to wait to get the result back from the teradata system isn't it okay per see the next scenario where i am going to choose my order status as the primary index how many distinct values i have can you tell me how many distinct values i have in the order status it is only o and c only two values so if i have only two values two distinct values in the primary index column how many amps are getting populated with the data can you tell me in the spawn in the chat windows you have only two distinct values in my primary index how many amps are going to be populated very good it is only two amps because all o's which generate same hash value would go into one amp here in this context is the third amp and all the records with the value c would go into a single amp that is in this context it is the amp number 1 so only these two amps are populated with the data and rest two amps get zero data so it is very much skewed highly skewed data if data is skewed like this the workloads are also skewed and the time 
what this AMP takes to process this much of huge data is the time what you have to wait for getting the result. Even though all AMPs working parallelly, you have to wait for the time which this AMP would take to process the whole data of this particular table which is stored in this portion. Right? So now I have got what the significance of getting data distributed across the AMPs and how your primary index will impact the performance of the table queries. If, if I execute any query on this table, this is the time I need to wait to process this particular AMP data. Right? So it is increased. In the first scenario, it was almost even only two to three records in each AMP. It was very optimized and in this context, it is very skewed and it has almost six records, almost three times more. right? So if it is in huge amounts of data, it would calculate to aggregations, right? It would calculate to more time, which we need to wait for. So we have to do a proper data analysis, how the data looks like and which one could be a better option to choose as a primary index. So that your data will get distributed almost evenly. And what is the other scenario we have to consider while choosing the primary index? And this is the one, the unique distribution or even distribution across the AMPs. So you will select a column which gives you almost even distribution. And what is the other, other consideration you have to keep in mind while choosing the primary index? Can you guess? Yesterday we have seen that. Right? This one. This one. What is this? Using that particular primary index column in the where clause with the equality condition. Okay? So these are the two considerations we have to keep. First one is the unique distribution. The second consideration is how frequently we are going to use this particular column in the where clause. If both these characteristics met at a particular column or a set of columns, then that is the best candidate to be chosen as a primary index. Clear? Any questions? Anyone? Yes, come on. Um, again, sorry, I don't have a mic, so you might have to you know, mute me once yeah. I finish the question. For today it is fine, but from yeah. tomorrow please. Yeah, actually, <laughs> okay, sure, I'll make sure. Yeah. Okay, the yeah. question, uh, I want to, uh, just a question here. Mm -hmm. In this particular slide, where you have two unique values for the order status, which is O and C, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, the first row went inside to the parcel, the hash algorithm generated a hash value, and it went to, say, for AMP3. Right. Right? So yes. again, if the second row has O, it will mm -hmm. go again to AMP3, which I understood. Right. My question is, in this exa for the example sake, my understanding is that you have shown the C as a different AMP, which is which is located right now in AMP1. Right. right. It is right. highly possible that even for C, it can go and sit in the same AMP3, right? Because yes. it all depends on what hash value generated by the hash algorithm. Right, right. Yep. Uh, it could happen. Yes. So it, so it can happen that even all the C will go into say AMP3 and even AMP1, 2 and 4 might remain empty. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, I just want to confirm that. Right, it could happen. Okay. Samina. Yeah, so in case of non-unique primary index, mm -hmm. uh, so, the hash, so the hash value is going to be different for each record. I just want to confirm. For non-unique primary index, it could happen that all the records will have same value because the non-unique primary index would allow duplicates, mm -hmm. right? So it could be all closed, right? After some time, all these records could have a value C closed status of all orders, right? You mean the hash value is not would be the same, or right? Hash value should be same for all the same primary index values. Okay, so how would we, if suppose if we want to get a particular record, so how can we get 
that you know record if hash value same okay so that depends on your report if you want to get all the records which are having status as closed or you have a condition on the customer number or order number so those particular columns you will use in the where clause right where customer number 2 if you want to see the orders of customer number 2 you will put condition like self sort from orders where customer number is equal to 2 so it will depend on the non index column here it is not that you may not you may be using this particular primary index always in your where clause it may depend on any other columns in your queries mm -hmm. at that time what happens if you don't use any index column in the where clause with equality condition what happens how the parsing engine will decide to get the data back mm -hmm. it's an all amp operation right mm -hmm. so all amps has to work on their portions of the data and if the data is evenly distributed it is an optimized time if data is queued it is queued time that means we have to wait for a long time so the performance is degraded mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay thank you okay. Okay, so is, is there a possibility that a uh, table can have a unique primary index as well as a non-unique primary index? No, there should be only and only one primary index for a table and that too you have to decide at the time of table creation. Okay, so that means if you define the primary key then the table cannot have a non-unique primary index. It's a different call. Okay, primary key is different, index is different. I thought your question oh. was on primary index. Uh -huh. Yes, the primary index, yeah. If you have a unique primary index or a non-unique primary index, that means the table has a primary index. Right. If you already have a primary index, you cannot create any other primary index on the table. No, what I'm asking is, if I have a primary index on a table, mm -hmm. for a different column, can I define it as a non-unique primary index? No. Primary index always should be 1. Got it? Right. Okay, if you yes. already selected customer number or order number as your primary index, you cannot select customer number as non-unique primary index because the index should be 1. Even it is a unique or non-unique, the index should be 1 for a table. And if you want, you yes. can create a composite primary index. That means the single index itself, you can mention all the columns what you want to choose as a primary index. Okay. Got it? I've got it, yeah. Okay. So for the table always there should be only and only one primary index and the primary index could be composite, the combination of columns. But if you selected one column as a primary index and you're done with that and after some time you want to choose one more column as a primary index, you cannot do that. You have to drop this table and you have to recreate the table with the new primary index. That's the only option. Right. Okay. Good. So now Let us see some certification related questions or interview related questions. Let us do a practice how it would look like and how you can choose the answers. Increase the font. Hope you will be see the font. Let me know. So I have to have to increase it more. Okay. And here I see one question. Let me complete this question in the chat window. Does the hash algorithm upgrade happen automatically when we add new system or we need to do it manually? It is taken care by Teradata Corporation. When you purchase the Teradata machine from Teradata Corporation to upgrade your existing machine, corporation people will come and it will take one day or two day outage. They will generally do it in the weekends. They will come and upgrade the system by adding new node to the existing configuration and they will upgrade the hash algorithms, hash maps, everything. Okay, so it is done by Teradata Corporation and it is very much transparent to the DBAs and developers. They don't know. Okay. Fine. Okay. Let's start our practice of certification questions. Please go through the first question and the options and tell me what is the answer. Either A, B, C, D, what is that? First question is, which of the following is not the responsibility of the parsing engine? Okay, not the responsibility of the parsing engine. Let us read out the options. 
controlling and establishing the sessions parsing the sql for syntax verification dispatching executable steps to amps fourth one is access data from virtual disk and perform locks on the table what is the answer which is not the responsibility of the parsing engine let's see each one of it the first one is controlling and establishing the sessions yes the sessions are controlled by the parsing engine okay, there exists one more subcomponent called session controller in the parsing engine and it will control the session so parsing engine will control the sessions and then parsing the sql for syntax verification who will do the sql syntax verification there is parser which is the subcomponent of parsing engine only right so yes parsing engine would do the sql syntax and verification and dispatching executable steps to amp who would do the dispatch the dispatcher right? let me open up because I get different answers for this. Let us clarify it. There we go. Right? I think your screen is getting refreshed still. Just a moment. Right. See here. Parser, optimizer and dispatcher. Parser will check the syntax and semantics, object existence and access rights. Optimizer will find out the best way of execution and divide the SQL into executable steps by the AMPs. Dispatcher will dispatch these executable steps to the AMPs. Right? So now let us go to the questions. So controlling and establishing the sessions. Okay, it is done by session controller which is subcomponent of parsing engine only. Okay, and it is activated only at the time of user ID and password verification but not for each and every individual query if session control is only to establish the session it executes only once per a user ID and then the SQL syntax is verified by the parser which is a subcomponent of parsing engine and dispatching the executable steps to AMP is also carried out by the PE because dispatch is a subcomponent of PE and access data from virtual disk and perform locks on the table who does this access data from virtual disk directly and performing logs on the table the physical operations on the data are performed by what component the physical operations means who access the virtual disk directly and performing all the logs sorting, aggregations, formatings, joins, all these operations are performed by AMPs, right? So now tell me what is the answer? Which of the following is not the responsibility of P? Not the responsibility of the P. Please observe this. I see answer in a different manner. It is not the responsibility of the P. So what is the answer? No. Everyone okay? It is D. Access data from virtual disk and performing locks on the table. So that is the answer. Which is not the responsibility of PE, but in the responsibility of AM. Right? So this type of little confusions we have to resolve. That is why I just wanted to give the boot camp of how to prepare for certifications, how to prepare yourself. Because you may be knowing the concept very well. But at that moment, if you don't see this keyword not you will give a wrong answer. So please read the question carefully and please read all the options carefully. Then only you answer. Because many times all the options would look like very similar. If you read each one of them, you feel everyone is right. So you have to completely read and you have to choose a very relative, a very closer to the answer. That is how you have to choose it. Okay. So everyone clear? The answer is the D, which is the responsibility of the AMP, but not the P. Okay. 
Okay, let me know if you have any question and we have to discuss on it. Right? Okay, the next one is message passing layer is the combination of what? PDE and the binet, PDE and the operating system, PDE and the P, or AMP and P. What is the answer for it? What is the answer for two? Very good. Very good. I see correct answer for everyone. Very good. It is PDE and the binet. No doubt in it, right? The message passing layer is nothing but PDE plus the binet software. And what is the third one? Which three functions are performed on the database when a user submit a query to Teradata? What are the three functions performed on the database when a user submits a query to Teradata? The binet passes the steps to the AMPs. Okay, you may not get it correct or not right now you just read out first the options and then you will come to the answer okay and then the binet retrieves the rows from the disks no it is completely wrong right the binet won't retrieve the data from the disk it is amp so it is not the answer okay and the amp dispatches the plan steps to the binet no it is also not the amp won't do dispatching and the parser evaluates the sql statement for proper syntax yes this is true right Okay, it looks like two. Let's hold it. And the optimizer develops the least expensive plan of executing the query. Okay. So now, what all three? See here, you have to choose three. Even you choose four, or even you choose less than three, it is a wrong answer. You have to exactly choose three. Otherwise, it is a wrong answer. So tell me three options out of them which are close to the answer. Very good. I see the correct answer for many people. The first one, the binet passes the steps to the AMPs. Yes, because the message passing layer does that and the binet is subcomponent of the message passing layer. So we can say binet passes the steps to the AMPs. Okay. Partially it is true. And then the AMP dispatches the plan to steps. No, it is not the answer. And binet retries the rows. It is not the answer anyway. And then let's see the D. The parser evaluates the SQL statement for proper syntax. Yes, this is completely true. So confidently you can lock it. And then the optimizer develops the least up explain the least expensive plan. Yes, this is also correct. And within these three, which one you want to choose as the third answer? Maybe somewhat this is relative. Right? Actually, the message passing layer does this, and binet is subcomponent of the message passing layer. Yes, you can choose it as an answer. A, D, and E. Very good. I see five right answers here. Good. And then the next one. Which three interfaces enable access to the Teradata database from a network attached client? Let me open up that slide. Maybe. If you already remember, you can answer it or you can see this slide, you can go for it. Which three interfaces available to have connectivity with the Teradata server? Call level interface, that is CLI, Unix database connectivity, UDBC, Java database connectivity, JDBC, Open database connectivity, ODBC and datagram congestion control protocol DCCP which one we know CLI, ODBC and JDBC these are the three protocols or interfaces what we can use to get connectivity with the network attached machines so it is A C and the D, open database connectivity, right? CLI, ODBC, JDBC. Very good. Then, <clears throat> which component is part of Teradata's open architecture? 
What does it mean? Open architecture. Open architecture means not within the single node architecture. Within these components, options, whatever you see, it won't exist within the node that is not in the architecture, it is open to the architecture. So what is the option? It is the node because node cannot exist within the node, right? That is the answer. AMP exists within the node. Disk has exists for each and every node, right? Because if each node is a self-contained executable, so node has everything: the disk, AMP, binet, message passing layer is everything a node would have so disk also would be within the architecture of the node and binet yes it is always there along with the PDE the binet works as a message passing layer so binet would exist within the node so all the other components would exist within the node but node cannot accommodate within the node so it is the open to the architecture of Teradata okay. Then, which is an advantage of relational database? A general RDBMS questions. It could also happen. General RDBMS, general data warehousing, all those questions would also come. You have to prepare for those. So, which is an advantage of relational database? They are technology driven, they are system driven, they are enterprise driven, or they are business driven. Yes, but it is D. Any technology is business driven. If business wants, we can provide the solution. If business don't want, whatever technology it is, what is the use of it? Right? So, any technology generally of a business driven technology and relational database concepts also business driven. It is all to make the business understand the functional problems. Right? So, it is business driven. Okay. The next one. When accessing the Teradata database from a network attached client, which two software components are used for communication? From the network attached machines to access the server, what all software components are used? And you have to choose how many? Two. Please see. If you choose one or if you choose three, it is a wrong answer. You have to exactly choose two. So what are the components we require to have the connectivity with channel attached I means sorry, not network attached systems? We don't know these things, micro cursor service, micro call level interface, but we know micro data director program and micro operating system interface. Isn't it? MTDP and MOSI. I see different answers here, so let me clarify this. See here, what are two components we have? MTDP and MOSI. These are the two software components required to have the communication from network attached machines to the Teradata server. So this MTDP and MOSI. Right? So after some time, after some days, if you see, all would look like similar. Okay, so at that time, we'll get the confusion. But here, on the last day only, we have this discussion, so it is easy. So please remember it till you complete. A okay, micro teradata director program and micro operating system interface are the two software components used for network attached clients. Okay. The next one. Which three functions are performed by Teradata when a user submits a query? Can you tell me? I have to choose three. Three functions performed by Teradata when a user submits a query. What are the answers? The binet matches the answer sets. Yes. Binet. Okay, once 
it gets on the set from each individual amp it will merge it okay and the dispatcher passes steps to the binet okay you can see it also looks similar and then the amps retrieve the data from their virtual disk yes it is definitely true and the optimizer evaluates the SQL statement for proper syntax no optimizer does not do the syntactic who does that pass so this is not the answer and the binet performs any output data conversion on the answer sets who does this operation data conversion it is by the amps but not by the binet so it is not the answer so this is relatively close answer the dispatcher passes steps to the binet yes. right so a b c very good i got only three answers but three answers are correct what happens to others please respond okay, even if it is a wrong answer not a problem there is no negative marking okay, please answer it everyone clear up to here for all the questions you want me to explain anything out of these questions everyone clear up to here very good please raise your hand in case you have a question okay on the ninth one which two components in a teradata mpp have hardware redundancy these two components have a hardware redundancy here amp basically it is a software component it is not in hardware at all node yes it is both hardware and software everything right node means basically the hardware what you have to purchase the processor the actual disk and everything and binet yes binet is also both the combination of hardware and software gateway is the network drivers for the network attached machine the ethernet card cable so it is a software component so amp and gateway are completely software components you know that and here they are asking for hardware redundancy so nodes yes you can combine multiple nodes in your configuration so nodes which is hardware component can be redundant in the configuration and that in an MPP system so the combination of multiple nodes so node is in hardware right and binet so when you combine multiple nodes to make it as an MPP you use binet hardware also and binet hardware also is a redundant component so the node and binet both are the redundant hardware components in an MPP massively parallel processing system is it I see different answer everyone clear now for this what all are the hardware components here simply node and binate only amp is completely a software component gateway is completely a software component so only node and binate are the choice you have to choose two clear right let us see the last question for today the amp controls its portion of the Teradata database performing the physical database work including which two tasks RAM controls portion of the Teradata database performing the physical database work including which two tasks the physical <laughs> database tasks what it does it merge the sorted answer sets no this is the responsibility of the message passing layer, right? The merging, the sorted answer sets. And output conversion and formatting. Yes. The formatting and conversions of data types, everything is performed by AMP because it is the physical operations on the data. And row storage and retrieval from the virtual disk. So who is responsible to retrieve the data from virtual disk and to store the data in virtual disk? It is again AMP. Right? So it is and what is the next option creation of the plan to return the response set no creation of the plan is responsibility of the optimizer which is the subcomponent of parsing engine but not by the amp so it is not the answer so what is the answer for 10 there you go b and c okay so i just want to 
give you heads up in you know, how a Teradata certification question should look like so that you can pay more attention to each and every concept what we go through in the next classes. Now you identify right what is the significance of each and every slide what we go through in our course material. Everything has a question in certification. Okay, so please make attention and once complete the class you just go through this course material and prepare your fade notes so that you will remember the things and you can perform better. Right. Any questions anyone? Where? Fine then. Okay. Let me see one question. Yeah, come down. Yes, come. Um, you may have, there was a question from one of the members saying that uh, well, can I create a unique index as well as a non unique primary index on the same table? Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you said it is not possible. Right. Uh, will it throw an error when you do that, or is it something? Because recently I, I you know, accidentally without knowing or something, we created a table with a unique and primary, unique index as well as a non unique primary index, and we did not throw any error. Either. How did you view that? In the, in the create table statement? Yeah, in a create table statement. It could be a secondary index. Is there primary keyword before that index or it is a normal index? I, I don't remember the structure, right? but it was definitely primary index first which implies it is a non-unique primary index and then the second one was unique index. Unique primary index as the second row when See the keyword. If there is a primary keyword, then only it is a primary. Otherwise, it is a secondary. So you are saying so? Okay, when you create a uh, second index, will it be just index? Right. Right. So, okay. Uh, let me cross it tomorrow. But I, I mean, still I feel that it is. I do not see any error being thrown by a teradata, but I might be wrong. I'll, I'll just cross it then. Yeah. You see the keyword primary because for primary. For primary index, the keyword primary is very much mandatory. If it is a secondary index, the secondary keyword is not mandatory, so it could be an index we have created. Or unique index or index. Both are second index only. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'll check that. Sure. Okay, we'll go through those second index concept, partition primary index concept later. Any other questions? Fine. So we'll meet tomorrow, the same time, same link. Okay, please go through the course material and please start installations. Okay. So probably Friday we'll have a off. So we'll get three days time to go through the installation process and all those things. And I will send you a set of action items for this long weekend because Friday also I'm giving off to you. We okay, start on the installation path. And I will send you some action items, the videos of data protection, so that you can go through that and complete them in your laser time during these three days. I will send you that notification to all of you. Okay. Thank you everyone. I'll see you again tomorrow at the same time to the same link.